And you know we're going to start with them Cowboys. They lose to the Patriots 13-9. The Patriots have now won 21 consecutive home games. It's unfortunate for this Cowboys defense. This Cowboys defense came to play. They held Tom Brady 17 for 37, 190 yards, one touchdown. At one point, he was 2 for 5 for 15 yards with a touchdown and an 87.5 quarterback rating in the first half. Tom Brady looks 22 the Cowboys had him playing like he was 42 yesterday. That defense deserved to win that game, but then it came down to a horrendous and absolutely atrocious tripping call by the referees, and those refs be tripping. That was ridiculous. You've had seven tripping penalties called all year. Yesterday, there was two in one game. There hasn't been two tripping penalties called in one game since 2015. So, look, it was the most anticipated game of the weekend, one of the most anticipated games of the year, and that's how we're ending it on a phantom tripping call. It was Bruh. almost like the refs huddled up and they were like, hey, the Patriots might actually lose a game at home. We've got to call something. But before that, the Cowboys could have already won this game. The Cowboys, six times during the game, they had a third and three. They passed it all six times. Ezekiel Elliott yesterday averaging four yards per carry. You do the math. You run the football. You have this power offensive line that's one of, if not the best offensive lines in the NFL, and you're throwing it in that situation. Games where the Cowboys should pass, they run. Games where the Cowboys should run, they pass. This scheme, this offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, sometimes the schemes are just not there. And I think, look, you go for it in that situation. Fourth and seven, the Patriots 11-yard line, just go for it. Here's Jason Garrett after the game. Yeah, again, the conditions were a factor, and then they were kicking it shorter, and they were hard balls to catch. And uh, in each of those situations, when they did kick it short, you know, one time we fumbled it, one time, you know, we just didn't handle it. So the wind and the, and the weather was a factor. And uh, again, we didn't handle the ball quite well enough in those situations and didn't put ourselves in favor of one of them. Yeah, it's cer certainly a challenge. It was a challenge for both offenses today. And uh, again, I thought the defenses played well. It was that kind of a game, cold, rainy, uh, tough conditions to handle the football. So you just have to keep banging away and try to give yourself an opportunity to win the ball game at the end. Now, Jason Garrett, are you a weatherman or are you a football coach? Because you spent the post game talking about weather conditions and excuses and blah, blah, blah. Look, excuses are like farts. They stink. And the reality was yesterday, you got out schemed. You got out coached once again. And now the Cowboys 0-4 against playoff teams this season. Only other teams that have that same record, teams like the Cardinals, Broncos, and the Cincinnati Bengals. So that is the company they keep, and that's not where Jerry Jones wants to be. Jerry Jones, he did not mince words after the game. Well, again, I'm, I don't. Uh, I think I really think it speaks for himself. I think we just look at uh, what happened on special teams and how they, how they. Uh, uh, I think you're going to get out coach when you come to uh, the, the, during this era when you come into uh, uh, New England. I do. I think you are. And uh, I give him his uh, uh, not do there, but it's just what you're dealing with. But my point is, don't get yourself in a spot to where you have to come up here and beat him. The staff, him, they're bringing it with what they've got right now. Accumulation of what they're supposed to have gotten after 10 years and what they're bringing to the table with all their education, experience, and everything. They're bringing it right out here right now. And we played uh, one of the best, and we're playing a lot of experience out there today, and we came up short. That's frustrating. And it looks like Jerry Jones finally knows what we've all known for the longest time. You've got to fire Jason Garrett. If you watched the broadcast yesterday, Troy Aikman was basically saying, hey, you got to fire this guy. And it makes sense. I was looking at old footage of Troy Aikman talking about coaching. It almost seems like he was talking about Jason Garrett. Down everybody's damn throat all the time. Why don't we have a coach that gets over there and does something about it? Instead, we want to go over and pat everybody on the ass and they haven't done a job all night. The guys out there off and nobody says anything about it. We got a head coach that won't say anything about it. We got coaches offensively won't do anything about it. Troy, Troy, Troy.
I mean, enough's enough. Aikman, fiery on the sideline, and tell me that didn't sound like someone describing Jason Garrett. He doesn't have that fire, his players aren't afraid of him, and it's time to go. What must be done eventually should be done immediately, and Jerry Jones, you got to be aggressive on this one. You have to come out like Vince McMahon on this one. Yes! Whoa! Yes! Maybe Jason Garrett can go coach in the XFL. Looks like he's too nice of a guy, and apparently he's going to be coaching the Giants if he gets fired from the Cowboys. But here's my five coaches. Five coaches I want to see replace Jason Garrett. Starting at number five, Eric Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator of the Chiefs, a former running back. He can get the most out of Ezekiel Elliott. Then number four, I got Dan Campbell, the offensive coordinator of the Saints. We all know that Jerry Jones wanted Sean Payton, so you can't get him. He just signed that extension, so why not take his understudy? He's a former Dallas Cowboy. He's a former Super Bowl winner, had coaching experience, had an interim job with the Miami Dolphins at number four. At number three... I've got Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer, he said how much he loved the Dallas job, how big of a job it was. Urban Meyer, all he does is win wherever he goes. It's a big job. He's a big name. And number two, Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley is a perfect head coach for Dallas. He has the offense down. Look what he did with Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield. Look how Dallas loves former Oklahoma head coaches like Barry Switzer. You know that Jerry Jones loves Lincoln Riley. I have him as the number two candidate. And then my number one coaching candidate that I want to see replace Jason Garrett. I don't think you guys are ready for this one. Are you guys ready for this one? Tony Romo. I want to see Tony Romo as the next Cowboys head coach. If you watch him broadcast, he knows the play before the ball is snapped. So, hey, you got that advantage. And then, two, look at him as a player. Yes, he didn't win a Super Bowl. Yes, he could probably have gotten more out of his career. But it was really derailed by injuries. You know he has that football acumen. He's got the mind. He's the splashy hire. He's getting $4 million a year from CBS. You offer him $10 million. You pay him what the Raiders paid John Gruden. And Tony Romo could be your next head coach. I want to see Romo in Big D. Jerry that is the move. Get it done. Thanks for watching the Get More Sports YouTube channel. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me at DMAC underscore LA. And for all the hottest sports content in the game, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and most importantly, give me all your takes on all today's topics right down below in the comment section. I want all your takes on today's topic right down below in the comment section. And for all the greatest in the world of sports, head over to GetMoreSports.com.